there must be a million ways to attach screws, bolts, or hardware to honeycomb panels, but there are no easy or good ways. The way I've chosen is to put a wood inlay into the honeycomb and then I can attach screws and hardware to the wooden inlay. So the first step is using the table saw to cut several strips of wood to a width that matches the thickness of the honeycomb panel. So now that these strips have been ripped to the right width, I have to mark them at the right length and use the chop saw to cut the wood strip to the, the proper length to go along the edge of the door where the hinge will be. And in a case of measure twice, cut once, I'm just verifying that this is also the right length to go on the door. And having verified that, I can use this piece to mark the piece for the door. Basically, I need a piece inlaid in the door and a piece inlaid in the door frame and the hinge will screw to these pieces of wood once they've been inlaid in the NIDA core. And surprise, surprise, this piece that I cut is now just exactly the right length to be inlaid in this edge of the door. The next step is to make room for my inlay. And I'm using the oscillating tool to cut the fiberglass on the front and back of the panel away from the honeycomb in the middle of the panel. It takes some concentration, but I can run the blade right along the edge where the fiberglass is bonded to the core and cut it loose. This is a narrower blade on the oscillating tool and it works just perfect for cutting away the core in between where I've cut it loose from the fiberglass. And this is leaving a little trench or notch where my wood inlay is going to go. Now I can test fit the inlay, make sure that it fits all the way along and that it can recess down far enough. I actually had to come back and cut a little bit of that channel deeper so that this wood would lay flush or even slightly recessed. Now that the channel for the inlay is the right depth, I'm painting the sides of it with catalyzed resin to glue the wood inlay in place. I've also painted resin on the wood on either side where it, it's going to bond to the fiberglass. And finally, I'm going to lay some more resin along the the part of the wood that's still exposed here. And I'm trying to flow resin into the gap between the wood and the fiberglass. I'm using wax paper here because the resin <coughs> won't stick to it. And I want to clamp the edges together to hold the fiberglass tight up against the wood inlay. And I don't want to glue my clamps or these wood strips to the pan outside of the panel. So the wax paper prevents that from sticking. The wood strip spreads the pressure of the clamps out all along the edge. I don't want 
to have like some points of contact I want it pinched along the entire edge and now that I've done that with the door frame I have to go back and do the entire job all over again with the door because I'm going to inlay that other strip of wood in the edge of the door for the other side of the hinge to screw to. And this isn't getting redundant at all. Meaning the resin inside the the slot and, and laying the wood, the wax paper, the clamp, and do you think we're done with the inlays yet? I wouldn't bet on it. So I'm cut I'm cutting away a little bit of the door frame to make room for the hinge and also to make room for the chop strand mat that will enclose the open cut edges of the honeycomb. And I told you there'd be more inlay. On the other side of the door, I wanted to put some inlays in place for some sort of latch for the door. And I don't even know what kind of latch there will be here, but there should be some reinforcement there. So, trying to make this move along quicker with the editing since we've seen this process several times already. And of course, since we're doing an inlay in the door frame, Once this is done, I bet there's going to be an identical inlay in the door itself. That would be a good bet. And here we go. Same deal with the door. Look at how the fiberglass vibrates with the oscillating tool. Just the stuff at the edge that's been cut away from the core is free to move and vibrates with the tool. And this will be the last of the wood inlays, I promise. Once the inlay is done, then the next step will be to cover it with some fairing compound. The inlays are just a little bit shy of the top. They're recessed by just a very little bit. So once this resin hardens, I'm going to put some fairing compound over all of these and see it's in place there and like every step with fiberglassing it's followed by sanding and I'm also doing fairing compound and sanding on the faces of the panels to correct a little bit of damage that was done when I cut off the core. Prairie compound sort of smears in like cake frosting and then you have to try and smear it flat with this spatula thing. 
I'm not very good at it, so I usually have to do a pass, sand it, and then do another pass and sand that before I get it flat enough for my liking. One of the biggest mistakes is to try to move on to gel coat without doing enough smoothing and sanding with the fairing compound because you'll see any imperfections right through the gel coat. I don't know if the video really shows it well, but the wood is recessed by maybe a sixteenth of an inch and so that's being built up with the fairing compound and there's a lot of this so it gets kind of redundant as well so I'll move on to where I'm closing in the cut edges of the core with chopped strand mat it's just covering that up so that exposed core is protected by something. I cut these little strips out of chopped strand mat that is just a little bit wider than the honeycomb panel. And it's not going to glue to the core at all, really. It's only going to bond to the fiberglass on the front and back of the panel. So I'm putting on a lot of resin and it soaks right through the chopped strand and bonds to the glass on either sides of the panel. I'm also building up the corners a bit because I could see that when I cut those they went a little bit wide. This is the hinge for the door. It's a running hinge, or sometimes called a piano hinge. And I've marked it at the length of those wood inlays, and I'm basically cutting it to the length of the wood inlays. And any time that you cut metal, or drill it, or do anything to it, you'll raise a burr. And so you have to sand that burr off so that the metal is smooth at the edges again. This is the fiberglass that I laid in to close the edges of the core. And if I keep the sander flat on the face of the panel, it'll sand that glass off just perfectly flush with the face. And finally, we can do a test fit with the hinge in place. And there's some corrections to make. I'm just going to go along now that I can see where the door fits in the frame. And I'm going to mark places that need to be built up or sanded down to get the gap between the door and the frame to be more even all the way around. See, obviously I need to build up some in this corner. I built up some already, but it's going to need quite a bit more here. And right next to it, there's a spot that's making contact. So I'm going to have to grind away a bit. And here as well. So that has to be ground away, and then this area over here is going to have to be built up in the corner. And I just work my way around, marking out where I need to adjust this. And then I can take the hinge back out and make my adjustments. Where I need to remove material, I just sand it off. And where I need to add material, I'm just tearing little pieces off of the chopped strand mat strips that I cut for the edging and I can just lay one little piece after another on here and build up this corner until I get it out to where I think it needs to be. And then there will be another test fit with the hinge in place and some more building up. 
but you can see I've actually built up quite a bit of thickness here by laying a few <coughs> chunks of chopped strand mat over that corner. And this is the same process for the door frame, except it's concave instead of convex. And I work my way around and just add chopped strand mat wherever it needs to go, wherever I need to build up. And of course, this has to be followed with sanding. And I just sand it flush with the surface. And once I've got some gel coat over this, you won't even know that that adjustment had been made. Every panel has two sides, so once I've finished sanding one side perfectly flush, I can flip the panel over and then I get to do it all over again for the other side. And finally, now that the door is adjusted, I'm going to wipe it down with acetone before painting some gel coat on. And I've wiped several times until there's no residue on the cloth. And finally the gel coat can go on. And as though the rest of it wasn't redundant enough, there's going to be several layers of the gel coat. And I'll try to speed this up in editing so it's not as boring as it might otherwise have been. But it's basically roll on a layer of gel coat, go away, let it harden, and then put another layer of gel coat on and like the polyester resin this doesn't need sanding between coats unless you put a wax additive which I'm going to add only in the very last layer and until that's done the, the surface will be chemically active and will form a chemical bond with the next layer of gel coat. This is the probably the final layer with the wax additive that will float to the surface and cut the resin off from the air. And if it doesn't see oxygen, that's when it will completely harden. I've just got to screw in at each end so I can test fit the door. I drilled a pilot hole. I've got some short screws that will go in here. 
and then I can screw in the screws. And the same for the other end. I'm going to have to figure out which camcorder does this. It doesn't do it all the time, but it's done it several times with the out-of-control focus. I shoot with several cameras, so I'm not really sure which one is doing it, but I should really get rid of that one. And now that I've verified that the door is where it needs to be and fits right here, I can go along and finish drilling holes and putting fasteners in. So, as I work on projects, it's important to test them at each stage of the process to make sure that everything is working right before I move on to something else. Yep, I think that works. There's a little spot where it makes contact at the top of the door. So I'm going to adjust that now before finishing up. I have to see exactly where it's hitting and then I can hit it with the sander that's better it swings through there freely now without touching anywhere And so now I have a door. And I guess that's just going to be it for this time. The door has to be saved for another week for the Festival of St. James, and then it can go on the locker after that.